Hi viewers and welcome to the channel and today we're going to be using FreeCAD and learning how to create different color inlays. So what we're looking at is creating a base print and we're going to cut some text out of that base print and produce an inlay that will fit snugly into that base so we have a two color print. This will require making either lettering or your icon or whatever you want to inlay slightly smaller. And I'm talking about fractions of a millimeter smaller than the void that's been removed from the surface. So I hope you find this video interesting and let's have a look how I did this. If you like what you've seen, please subscribe to the site. I also have a Ko-Fi or a coffee site that you can donate to if you so desire. And that's at ko-fi.com forward slash mang0. I also run a Patreon where you can subscribe and get extra content. And that's at www.patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions. Any money that's kindly donated will be used to span the channel. So what we're gonna do is build a simple model to test inlays with. And we can come over to SketchUp and we're gonna create a new sketch, XY plane, okay. And just place a simple square in here and this is just for a test so we're going to place it centered use the symmetrical and also i'm going to set these sides to be equal and set a length of 20 millimeters in there so we've got that there we hit close got the sketch come over to the part we'll extrude this and we're going to extrude it about 10 millimeters along the normal, so this way. So we've got our shape extruded. Now we're gonna add some text to it. So come in, select the top, but first come over to the draft workbench because we're gonna place the text upon there. And this is the inlay we're gonna create. So we're gonna cut this into here. So create the text on top, click on the top of the face. Now we need to set the working plane. So come over to the utilities and select plane. If we look at the gridding, by turning the gridding on, our plane has been set. So if we just set the plane to this face, utilities, select plane, that places it upon there. We want the top one, select the top one, utilities, and select plane. That means we can sketch our text upon there. To do that, we're gonna be using something called shape from text. Now it's gonna ask us where to set the point. So you can see the z-axis has already been set to 10 millimeters. So this is a 10 millimeter high extrude. So you can see it's been placed upon that plane. If I hit reset point, it's all gonna to go to zero, zero. So we need to select where it's gonna be placed. So I want to place it about there. We can come in and do some amendments if we want by zeroing these out, zero millimeters and zero millimeters. Set the string, I'm just gonna put I in in there. And we want the font file. So I'm on Ubuntu, so this is my font file directory. It'd be different on Windows. So just go and find that. And the true type fonts, and I'm gonna use Deja Vu Bold. Once that's all set, we've got the height as 10. That should be about right. We can change that if we want. We can change it after as well. We get that in there. If we look down, we've got the size, which we can change, and the string, which we can change. Want to move this so i'm going to use the move tool so click on the shape and use the move tool or modifications move and we'll just place this into position click on it and move it into position i want it there the text is upside down so we can just come around the other way if we want to once we've got our text in there and we're happy where it's going to be placed we can make the extrusion so come back to the part workbench. Let's turn the gridding off. Come back to the part workbench. And extrude that text. Make sure it's been selected. We haven't selected anything, so select the shape string. And we want it to reverse, because the extrusion will go out this way. Let's put it reverse. We can change this afterwards if we want. And we'll set this to something like four mil. And hit OK. That's extruded that text. So if I click on the extrude, press the space bar, you can see that's extruded in there. Now we click the one we want to keep, which is the original extrude, this one. Control click, the extruded text. 
as you roll over it, see it highlighted there. And then we make the cut. So this is where the inlay is going to fit. So this will be a different color. The next thing we need to do is come into that original extrude for the text. So this text extrude, and we can name this text extrude. And I'm going to make the inlay from this. So as long as I don't affect this one, then it won't affect the cut. So for instance, if I use the extrude, the original extrude, I'm just going to hide this cut. So click on the cut and hide it. We get the original extrude there because it's visible. If I click that and I want to inlay this, so I want to make this smaller. Now there are a number of tools. We've got 2D offset, 3D offset, etc. And these may not work to what we want. So 3D offset, for instance, you can see if I hit OK, that's going to go into error. So we can't 3D offset that. So what I want to make is an offset of this lettering. One way of doing this is to use a chamfer. So we're taking that text extrude, make sure nothing's selected, come up to part and come down to chamfer. This will chamfer the sides. We've got no selected shape, a selected shape, text extrude. So remember that's the one in here. And this won't affect that cut at all because it's gonna create a new operation and a new object upon there. Now we select the faces. So this one and this one, those two are selected. And we can change the length. So I'm going to place it 0.3 millimeters to start with. It's depending on the tolerances of your 3D machine. So you may have to experiment with a sample print first. Let's hit OK. We have that chamfer. Now notice how the chamfer sits outside of this cut. So this chamfer and this cut are two totally different objects. But the chamfer here has a relationship with the text extrude, this one. And you can see when I press the spacebar to show that, they're both showing. So we've got a branch from the text extrude, so we can actually modify the chamfer. But as long as we don't modify the underlying text extrude, it won't affect our cut. And you can see them separated there. We're not going to modify the chamfer, we're just using that as a base. The reason being, I'm going to take this face from our chamfer and make the inlay from that because this has offset us from this edge. It may be a bit too far, but we can play with the tolerances later. We can use this to make an extrude from. But how do we do that? Well, over in the draft workbench, we have tools called a face binder. This one here. We need to select the faces. So select the face of the I and the face of the N. And then come up to draft in and face binder or use the face binder tool from here. We get the face binder. Come up to the chamfer now. So we've got the chamfer here, it's still visible. Hide that chamfer. And what you're seeing there is if I hide the cut, we've got our surface ready for extrusion of the inlay. Now the face binder has got a number of options down here. For instance, we have offset, which we can move this. If I just refresh or click on the screen, we can move that up and down. So I'm going to move this back to the base. So in the draft in, if I bring back the grid in, we've got that grid in there. We see that it's below that gridding because we've done an offset of minus one millimeter. Bring back the cut. We can see that in there. Now this is 10 millimeters away from the base. So we go view, toggle axis cross. We can see that axis cross there. Let's get rid of that gridding. Let's just show you where it is and hide the cut. I'm gonna move this down so that face binder, the offset of the face binder, and we'll go minus 10. Just bring it back to the face, and our extrusion, well, our cut, we look in here, we've used an extrude 
a reverse from the original text extrude, this one here, with a length of four millimeters. Let's hide that and hide that cut, pressing the space bar on both on those. So we can extrude this face binder with extrusion here of four millimeters. So we've got that inlay there. Now we've got two models. So we've got the cut and we've got the inlay. The chamfer we're not going to use, this chamfer here, we're not going to use that. So I'm going to rename this, and keep the face binder. We're just going to put in the face binder there. And we've got the cut, which is our main object. And that's neaten this up a bit for the 3D printing. So I'm going to come over to the part and add some chamfer in on here. So we'll just chamfer off the sides. So make sure nothing's selected because we're going to do the chamfering from in here. So we've got no selection. Let's pick our cut and we'll select the faces. So select faces and I'm going to go around all the outsides and click, just clicking, not holding down control or anything. I selected all those faces and we can decide on the chamfer. Let's go about three millimeters and okay. Let's see what that looks like. That's in there. May want to reduce that a bit. So we can double click on that chamfer to two mil. They've all gone to two mil, it's a constant length. Okay, that. And we've got our cube, chamfer to cube there. So our inlay face binder, if I rename the chamfer cube as cube chamfer. So this is going to be my model that I'm going to export as well as the inlay face binder. They've all been zeroed. So they're all at zero, so zero, zero, their part there. That means they've all been laid on the same axis. So it should be quite simple to export those out and get those into our 3D printer. So I'm going to export these. So I'm going to first come down and look at this inlay and look at the view. And I'm going to up the deviation to make it a bit smoother for the export. 0.5 there, Let's make that 0.1. That means the STL export will be a lot cleaner. We may not need it for this, but it's worth doing. And we'll do the cube as well. So we look at the view and deviation 0.1. So let's export these there. Inlay, file, export, STL. And we'll stick that into the downloads and we'll place that on the desktop That's our face binder and the cube file export. And it's still showing the inlay face binder there. So let's make sure that we have exported that out. So that's change this to cube. We'll take both of these and hide them. And we'll just import those back in. So file import cube and we've got that cube there. So that's good. Delete that and file import and the inlay. We're experimenting with this inlay. Let's delete that and bring back the inlay face binder. Remember this is part of the chamfer. So we look at the data of the chamfer and we'll double click that. And we chamfered all these edges. So if we find a problem with the fit of this inlay, then we can change the chamfered edge to bring this down. For instance, let's bring this up to four and hit OK. And you can see this has modified, this has moved down now. The chamfer has been made visible. Double click that, bring this back down. Let's go for two. So a smaller one. And you see that's widened there. 
we can play with this to get the right inlay width. So let's hide that chamfer. And we've got the face binder there. Now, one thing that you might want to do with this inlay is that we have the cube chamfer hidden there, which has got the inlay face binder. We may want to make copies of these just to test on the 3D printer. So different whips of chamfer to allow for this inlay. Because when we change the chamfer, bring that chamfer back so we can see it there. And we double click the chamfer and so let's move this down to 0.2 and hit OK. You can see we get this chamfer here and this has changed. So as we change this 0.1 and OK, it all changes. The inlay here changes. How do we make a copy of that? Because if we clone it, it's going to be parametric. Well, there's something in the part workbench that allows you to do that. And that's create a simple copy. So at the moment, our inlay is at a distance of 0.1. Let's bring this up back up to 0.2. Okay, that we can see the change. Click the inlay, come up to part and come down to create a copy and create a simple copy. If you look down to the left, you see create a simple non-parametric copy. It's been cut off there. That creates a non-parametric copy there. And we can set that to inlay 02 millimeters. So we've got that inlay there. Come back to the chamfer and double click it and set this to 0.3 millimeters. Hit OK. See that's changed there. We've got the other inlay, this one here, and it's sitting in there. Let's just hide that inlay and come back to the face binder part, create a copy, create a simple copy. Then we've got this one, rename that 0.3 millimeters. So we've got two inlays. I'm going to hide both those now with chamfers and the original inlay. And I'm going to transform one of these, transform, bring it over to the side. So I'm going to print these side by side and bring this one back. So we've got those two there. Just got to remember which one's which. So we've got two millimeters and three millimeters side by side. I'm going to control click both of those and part compound, make compound. That's created those as a single collection. Now I can go out to the file, export, and we'll place this as inlay test. And that is ready to test with our 3D printer. We can see the different widths there. So we've got the large width and the thinner width there. We can see which one fits in there. We've already exported our cube which is this one and we're ready for 3d printing and testing this in layout so i'm going to first print these in white and then i can go over to the emerald for the cube chamfer this one here then place these in here either glue them or if they're a snug fit we'll just leave them in there as is let's see how this works so this is the inlay lettering those two different sizes and I had to place down a little bit of print stick just to get that to adhere to the surface. And you can see we've got a nice print on those two different sizes of lettering there. I next swapped over to a colored PLA. This one I'm using a silk. It's actually an emerald, but it's more of a gray silvery color. I printed the base, so that actual cube with the cut lettering inside. The results around the outside were nice and shiny, but I've still got some dialing in of the actual 3D printer for the top. This is a default setup, so there's no firmware upgrade. All I've done is leveled the bed, but we have some imperfections on the top of the surface. I've just done a standard slice from here, so I just load it into the slice and just export it straight out. I found that the largest size lettering 
fitted in there perfectly. So it's a nice tight fit. Took a bit of pressing to actually push that eye in there and the end went in quite solidly as well. So they're, they're not gonna come out even if I didn't use glue. So there's no gluing in here. I just pushed those letters in there and we got a nice end result. So the actual technique works absolutely fine. And here's the end results of the two, the lettering and the cube. So I hope you found that interesting. I'm gonna be doing more experiments with 3D printing and FreeCAD, as well as the usual videos, the tutorial videos on my channel. Thanks a lot for watching. I hope to see you again in the next video. If you like what you're seeing, please subscribe to the site. I also have a Ko-Fi or a coffee site that you can donate to if you so desire. And that's at ko-fi.com forward slash mang0. I also run a Patreon where you can subscribe and get extra content. And that's at www.patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions. Any money that's kindly donated will be used to expand the channel. Thanks a lot for watching and subscribing and I'll see you again soon.